Thank you. Um, my name is Unha Sa from Age Friendly Columbus and Franklin County. Thank you so much, Charger uh, Government, for um, giving me the opportunity to be here. It's an honor. Um, I wanted to uh, share a little bit about Columbus and Franklin County. Columbus is a capital city of um, the state of Ohio, and we're the 14th popular city in the U.S. currently. And um, with the county total, uh, we have 1.3 million people. And um, as I was just um, sharing with you, um, currently we have about 20% of a po uh, population who's 60 years old or older. Um, by the year 50, though, um, the number is expected to be doubled. So um, we can all agree that it's a very much a gr growing older adult population. Um, currently um, in Columbus, the, uh, the median age is 34.2. Um, but again, it's a um, growing city. And um, let's go to the next slide, please. So yeah, um, so we are also one of the 26 age-friendly communities in Ohio currently. And yeah, I think I shared it all. Um, next, please. Um, before I go on, I wanted to share a little bit um, of our city so that you can take a look at our city and a real resident. This is Karen, who's actually a real uh, Columbus resident who's also in the um, advisory council with us, older adult, real older adult in Columbus. So as you can watch the video, um, I want you to kind of think about the eight domains that um, Dr. Uh, Herrick Dessa had shared with you all. Um, but just um, take a look at it. And because it's kind of a hard to share about age-friendly work to some people sometimes, uh, we created this video. So can you My name is Karen Peters. I'm 74 years old. One day I said to my husband, I thought you were going to build me a little house with a little yard. And he said, I thought you always wanted to move to German Village. So I started looking right there. Of course, I could get around a lot better than I could walk. When I wake up in the morning every day, the first thing I do is turn my simulator on. If I just had the one problem, the essential tremor, that would really sort of fix it. But unfortunately, I have Charcot Marie II, which is the muscular dystrophy family, and it affects your muscles and your coordination and your balance. So it doesn't really, they don't have anything for that. When we first moved here, I could walk to the city center on back. Believe it or not. I keep telling the doctor I need a brain implant. <laughs> he, he, he thinks that's funny. Uh, let's see, my day is, well, my day is pretty hard. <laughs> Anything I do. But I'm so used to it. I'm trying to think of the hardest part. This is happening to me slowly. So I have been able to adapt my house to my challenges. Brush my teeth and all that, put the order on and all that. I can see I can do everything here, sort of. <laughs> and then the other thing I guess is thinking about uh, if this keeps getting worse, what's next? <laughs> imagine this, but almost every person's house has steps of some kind. So I have to really know where I'm going and know that there's going to be somebody there to help me in and out. So I guess I kind of, if I'm going someplace new, I kind of think about that. But now when I go out on my cars, really, it's 
I'm pretty relaxed. Bring those right over here on the desk because we got less than thank okay. you. I do a lot of social things. I like to go out by myself sometimes because I can go on my own time. And there are a lot of restaurants here that I can get in and out of. Getting around on the mobility cart, you have to be really cautious of what routes you use. I go through here. I don't think I can get through though. I think it's too tight. When I'm gonna cross the streets at different intersections, I never go when they're on the countdown. I always wait till the beginning of the light change, so I have plenty of time. I think Columbus said pretty good, except the curb cuts. If I have a railing to hold on, I can get up steps if I can hold on really good. But in German Village, that just does not happen. The biggest thing is the restroom. Whoever puts the bars up in the restroom don't have a clue what you need, you know, where. So I, you know, I don't really think anybody could understand unless they'd been around somebody when they see somebody that, you know, hard to get around. But I don't really feel like I'm in my 70s. <laughs> As you can see, our work is very um, intentional and inclusive. Um, we try to incorporate an older adults in any work that we do. Um, we joined the network of age-friendly communities in 2016 as a city and in 2018 as a county. Now, in the assessment and planning phase, we were housed in the Regional Planning Commission, and that's when we were directly um, supported by the government. But when we moved into the implementation phase, um, that's when we moved to Ohio State University. And that's when we developed the Age-Friendly Innovation Center, which is a, a part of a program under College of Social Work. Next slide, please. Um, so well, yeah, we completed our reassessment in 2021, and uh, we are currently in the second cycle of age-friendly work. And this is um, us, Age Friendly Innovation Center. We directly manage the work of Age Friendly Columbus and Franklin County. We are a team of um, scholars, social workers, and researchers. Next, please. Um, these are some of the uh, research initiatives. Um, because we are uniquely embedded within a university, um, we have the capacity of um, working directly with students, and we believe that we are able to make more impact by being grounded in research in everything that we do. So we have um, some of these highlights are including transportation research, housing, and one of the new ones, uh, which is around the climate change. Next, please. Um, we engage with students in many different levels. Um, we have a lot of um, online courses and digital field lab is one of the courses that we developed for social work students to learn about working with older adults and the caregivers. We also host um, social work students every year and also make lots of research positions available for um, a lot of different students without, uh, throughout the university in many different disciplines. Next please. 
Um, we are very, very proud um, about our scholars program. Um, this is a program where we host scholars from um, different schools within the university for one semester. And this is actually a job. Um, it's a very different kind of a concept than an internship. So they get paid to learn about aging and the age community movement. And this is actually part of um, our big strategies for um, age-friendly work. So for that one um, semester, they have um, opportunities to build network within the community. Um, they get the mentorship and they get the education, um, service opportunities, and um, all kinds of um, engagement opportunities. Next, please. Um, so far, we had a lot of students from different colleges um, with very different discipline backgrounds, um, including neuroscience students and occupational therapy students and things like that. And they learn about aging and aging process. And we think it's very important, especially with the changing demographics, because um, age-friendly work is so broad and it could be incorporated in any field they end up going into. So we hope that we can educate the next generation so that they learn about age, um, aging and ageism so that they can bring the lens of um, aging and also accessibility in any field they end up going into. Next, please. As a part of the um, Positive Aging um, campaign, we have uh, this Button Up Ageism program. Um, so basically, we make these fun buttons um, with a lot of students. Um, it says a lot of fun things on there, um, including aging. So cool, Everybody, uh, everyone is doing it. Um, I brought a lot of these buttons. If you want one of them, please come see me um, at the end of the event. So um, this is part of our initiative to break the stereotypes about ageism and aging population. So we make a lot of these buttons and share everywhere we go. I think so far we shared about 4,000 buttons um, in the world. Um, we also do these billboard advertisements. Um, these are all real older adults of Columbus. So any of the publications that we do and the reports, we don't use any stock photos because uh, we think it's very important to include the real older adults in there. So we do hold um, photo sessions annually and highlight older adults and the leaders and always lift them up um, as leaders in the community. Change agents is one of our strategies to go out to uh, local middle school and teach about ageism and we actually invite local older adults coming in there and have them talk about how it, it, it is to age and the middle school students learn about it and have discussion about ageism. Next, please. Um, I get to speak briefly about the program that I manage. Um, it's called Technical Assistant Program. Next, please. Um, it started from this question, how can we support your age-friendly journey? Now, it is because um, we are one of the leaders of age-friendly work in, um, in our local community and also nationally. A lot of the communities come to us and ask questions. How did you do this? How did you do that? Um, so that's why when we thought, okay, capacity building is so important, let's help um, other communities. So we developed this program. Next, please. Um, so the goal of the program is to increase the number and strength of Ohio communities working toward age-friendly goals through education, training, mentoring, and research. Next, please. So part of the education is the online certificate course. Um, we are currently under the process of uh, building more courses, but this QR code is for the course um, one, the first one, and you can learn the very basic of um, age-friendly communities um, theory and the, the movement, and also you get, uh, you get the guide of how to actually do the work. And this course one covers up until the assessment phase, and we're building the course two, which has um, the beyond. Um, of the framework. And at the end of the course, you get this little certificate. Next, please. This is a mentoring session so, uh, called Office Hours. It's a 
virtual space where we meet every month at the same time and we talk about um, our issues and questions and uh, discussions. So anybody is invited. If any of you has, has a question or you're curious about the work that you, we do or you want to share about the work that you do, please come join us. Um, that's a QR code. Sometimes it's a big meeting between communities and we share. Sometimes it's one-on-one -on -one, um, session and it's open to anyone. Next, please. Um, we also um, have uh, uh, help this organization called CAFCO, Coalition of Age Friendly Communities of Ohio. It's a grassroots organization um, in between the 26 age friendly communities of Ohio, and we try to gather data so that we can share the data collected in all these communities um, to make it available online so we can learn from each other what questions uh, we are asked or how it was answered in other communities and things like that. Next, please. And experience age friendly is the area that we're trying to expand and we're hoping um, to expand for those communities who like to come in and learn about hands on how age friendly work is being done. We've already done that with Kanagawa Prefecture before and we're hoping to continue to do so. Next. And that's all I have. Thank you so much. Again, if you want to learn more about what we do, please come see me. Thank you so much.